All right, this is Chadwick here. I want to show you very quickly how to quickly mix a uh, music bed with voice track, whether it be voiceover or natural sound or vo um, interview, you know, sync sound. Um, and this will work with pretty much any application that I know of. Um, and I've been using this method for the past eight years, and it allows me to work very quickly and make changes on the fly. So here it is. So let's say we have a, uh, a voiceover track. Um, such as this uh, quote from one of my favorite new shows, Revenge. Two wrongs can never make a right because two wrongs can never equal each other. Okay, so we have that voiceover track and we want to add music to it. Um, I've got a piece of marimba music that I'm just going to overwrite right down here into tracks three and four. Um, as you know, uh, with uh, most of you know, with uh, music tracks when they first come in, they're extremely hot. They're mixed up to about zero decibels. Um, so typically, um, they won't mix well with voice. So we have to bring them down when the voice uh, is talking. Um, and this is called ducking. And the way, uh, you know, if we don't do that, you'll hear this, and you won't be able to decipher what's being said. Two wrongs can never make a right because two wrongs can never equal each other. So there we go. Um, you can see it doesn't really work. So uh, in order to uh, make this thing mix very quickly, here's how I would generally proceed. First thing I want to do is kind of get them a little closer lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and scoot this, uh, this voice over here up so it'll be uh, more along with that beat. Um, I will um, go ahead and uh, move to the first frame of the voiceover track, and I'll make a cut point. And I'll go to the last frame of there, and I'll make a cut point, control V. Um, now what we have is match frames. What this allows us to do is we can take a portion of the music and drop the level. The way I view levels is in the mixer, right over here on the right, lower right. Uh, if I hit control uh, left bracket, uh, that lets me control it in, in different increments. I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the music down to about minus 12 for this section. And these sections here, we can probably leave it like uh, minus three or so. And uh, both of those are at minus three. And the way that we make this tr transition happen smoothly from going from minus three in the music here to minus 12 is simple uh, crossfades. So command option T will give us a nice crossfade that we can place. And then the final step, um, and again, this is really quick. Uh, all you can do, what you can do now is you, because those are edit points, you can roll them just like you would with video. Just hit the R once. Um, you bring up the roll tool. You can move them this way, move it this way, just a little bit to sort of perfect um, that change. Um, we should be able to hear, you know, a, a decent mix very quickly. can never make a right because two wrongs can never equal each other. And you could hear the music was loud and went down and went back up. Pretty simple stuff. Um, it, the advantage to this method over using the uh, clip overlays, you know, which involves rubber banding and keyframing, is it's very fast to make changes. For instance, um, Let's go ahead and turn that back off. Now the reason I don't like the rubber banding, by the way, is that it's very easy to accidentally bump it and then, oh, we just, you know, totally messed up our mix by s accidentally sliding that. So I'll undo that. I'm going to turn this off. I don't ever like to have that or the transparency overlay on top because it's easy to drop the transparency to, say, 97% and you really can't tell. Um, so let's say we had to make a quick change and the voiceover has to land right here. Now all of a sudden our uh, music, you can see right here in this part, is at minus 12 here. Music right here is at minus 3. It's in the wrong spot. Um, you know, the quickest way to, that I know of and I've been using for a long time to, uh, to move the audio change to match back up with it is simply we can just roll those, um, those edit points of where we ducked for that piece of VO right on over. So you take those over there and we should be pretty close to a, you know, a decent spot for a rough cut. Two wrongs can never make a right because two wrongs can never equal each other. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I might refine this just a tad and uh, take this guy, maybe move him a little bit further forward. 
Um, I like to make sure there's enough room when the music dips uh, that you're prepared to start hearing someone say something. Um, the first word that they say is usually important and we need to hear it. So here it is one more time. Two wrongs can never make a right because two wrongs can never equal each other. And it's back up. Hopefully you can add this to your workflow, whether you're in Media Composer, Premiere, Final Cut, any of those, it should pretty much work. But um, another thing too about some of the early versions of the OMF and export from Final Cut is that you weren't able to export the the uh, level changes via the uh, you know keyframed audio to get it out to Pro Tools for a mixer. So when I first started in Final Cut Pro 3, I believe it was, um, you had to use crossfades if you wanted to have your your project mixed by a you know a pro audio guy. So hopefully this tip helps you guys. Um, let me know if there's any other suggestions or you know if you have any other ideas on on you know fast workflows for mixing audio beds with voice. All right, thanks for watching.